remember to not play with maximum effort, uh, perfect attitude, uh, play for each other, and just let the chips fall in there. We're not dating, by all means, but everybody is looking at us like we're dating. And like they're Goliath, and like they can't be beat. Goliath can be beat. That's what we gotta do tonight. Everybody has counted you out. Nobody thinks you're gonna win. They ain't ran through the jungle. They ain't fought what we fought. Guys, guess what? Tonight, they in our jungle tonight, guys. You wait a whole week for this, bro. Right, count down three, one, two, three, take count. Block Alive Week 14 of the end zone. We got Pat Scratch Fever, not to be Lewis from Calhoun City, all playing big time playoff games. And we'll show you their highlights. And we're tackling the top of three in Choctaw County and Houston, playing Yazoo County and North Panola. They give them all they can handle. And survive in advance, Starkville and West Point playing big time games and matchups. We'll have all the highlights and scores next. The WCBI End Zone Show with Robbie Donahoe and Tom Ebel is brought to you by OCH Regional Medical Center, Carl Hogan Toyota, East Mississippi Community College, and Max South. It's week 14 of the End Zone presented by OCH Regional Medical Center, our great partners with us as well. Carl Hogan, Toyota, East Mississippi Community College, and Max South, Tom Ebel, Robbie Donahoe. Uh, week 14 has been awesome, it has but been let's awesome. be honest, we're already looking ahead to what we have in week 15. It, it, it's, yes. I, I'm not lying, it may be the greatest Friday night that we've ever <laughs> had in high school football. That's how good it's going to be next Friday. But before we get to that point, let's see how we got Let's there. enjoy what we had tonight with week 14 of the end zone. We had three, we had a trio of Carl Hogan Toyota games a week. Part one, pretty good start from Macon. Knoxby looked imposing their will. They looked pretty good tonight. They did. Yeah. WCBI High School Football Game of the Week is brought to you by Carl Hogan Toyota in Columbus. The beautiful Toyota RAV4 2018 edition, beautiful car, drives like a dream. Got a nice pickup too. Go get a little bit of giddy up. Yep, get one from our friends at Carl Hogan Toyota in Columbus. And then to the game, Knoxby County taking on Corinth. Look at Corinth pregame doing a hit drill. <laughs> That is how you get ready for some playoff football. It. But unfortunately, when it came down to game time, Knoxby County was doing a lot of hitting. Skirt, Amarni Clark made a couple of people miss, rumbling down inside the five, then just right, handed it off right. to Kaziah Pruitt, right who's going to turn on the Jets and just run you right through. That. You don't. And so the race is in for the touchdown. It's 13 0 Knoxby here early in the first quarter. And it wasn't done just yet. Clark showing off the arm. Beautiful ball. We just talked about how do you stop that between Rashad Eads know. and Kaziah Pruitt. How do you stop it? Armani Clark just he's got a litany of weapons amongst <laughs> Knoxby County. We were just talking about Kaziah. An embarrassment of riches. That's exactly yeah. exactly another it. Touchdown. It's another one for Kaziah. Just throw it up to him. He's going to catch it for a touchdown. 21 0. And then Corinth comes alive. This is Tamarin Patterson. He had no holes. All night, Knoxby County Until was this. dominant up front, and then the one time he did, Tamarin makes him pay. 60 yards to the house, 21-7, cutting into that lead, but Knoxby County would shut the door immediately. This is Jaquil and Smith on the run, but look at Antarius Gray, just <laughs> panting. He's the Baker man, yeah, flipping flapjacks. He's the pancake man out there. They're gonna reward Smith with the touchdown. Jaquil and Smith was fantastic tonight. Knoxby so County, 43-13. I don't think they had a rushing play that went for negative yards. They were absolutely dominant up front on the offensive line and on the defensive side. They are hitting their strides ever since the bye week after that yeah. four game gauntlet to start the year. No one wants to see Knoxby. No one. This is this is the method to Tyrone Shorter's madness. Every single year he starts off the season with this ridiculous run of Starkville, West Point, Meridian, yep. and all these <laughs> crazy teams, and then you get into foray and you're like, these teams aren't they, we can beat these teams. They're not Starkville and West Point. And they're running into that now. And and you see how good they are. There's a tough foray team that oh, might we're, be. We're gonna get to that. We're going to get to that. Yeah, wait, just wait. We're going to get to who they get to play in the 40 North that final coming up in a matter of moments. But let's get to part two of our Carl Logan Toyota Game of the Week. Ackerman was alive tonight. If you have not gotten to a game at Choctaw County yet, I, I strongly urge you to go because yep. Ben Ashley's got this town and this community fired up for football. And in the first quarter, 
North Panola has a 6-0 lead. Tanner Threadgill was a menace in the backfield. Gets a sack there, so we keep it at 6-0 after one. Second quarter, uh, here comes Letary McBride <laughs> running over, guys, picking up a first down. And then a big fourth down coming up here for the Chargers. They are in North Panola territory. Austin Tolano pulls it on that fullback dive. Going to pick up a first down. And then the rumbling, bumbling, stumbling Austin Tolano going to finish it off with a two-yard in punch there. in right there. Cal or Choctaw County takes a 7-6 lead in the second quarter. Feeling good. Maybe the Chargers can pull off this massive upset. On the ensuing kickoff, though, this was sort of the story of the night. Silvante Oliver is a bad man. He gets one off the left side, and he's going to get free. 70 yards for the touchdown. North Panola goes up 14-7. They would go up 22-7 later in the second quarter until then, until Choctaw County gets tricky. Hook and ladder. Bryce yes. Udley to Amarius Brown for a first down. Field goal was no good at the end of the half, though. Got to give it up to Choctaw County. No reason to feel bad or hang your heads after this one. They hung tough with a really good North Panola team. 28-14, that storybook season for the Chargers. Unfortunately, comes to an end. And I gotta say, I gotta say, we're not gonna get to see Austin Tolano play anymore. No, he has been so much fun to watch this year running that, whole that triple option. Really that whole has. team has been so much fun. Yeah. So Ben Ashley's got that program going in the right direction. They're gonna be back and they'll be really good next year yeah, as well. They will. All right, into Class Two A to the Boneyard we go. Philly, Calhoun City. What a matchup of Goliaths we had tonight, and what a start for Calhoun City. <laughs> Down the seam, JoJo Gray to Davion Hull, who is just making all sorts of guys miss. And then Big Fellow 34 can't keep up. 75-yard touchdown. It is 8-0 Calhoun City. Then Philly would take over, but Philly would turn the ball over. As DeAndre Fox would pounce on this fumble right Ooh. here. Or DeAndre Fox fumble in here, actually, from Philadelphia. And Calhoun City going to recover. So City is back on offense. Like I say, the all-black uniforms are real are one of my faves. They, Calhoun City does not have a bad uniform combination. No, all orange are going black. And here goes JoJo Gray. They would catch him inside the third. They would link Hickman with the stop. Uh, but later in the second quarter, City has an 8-0 lead on a fourth and goal. Speed sweep, Treshawn Cooper, money in the bank. Two-point conversion, good. City goes up 16-0. They needed a fourth and goal touchdown in the fourth quarter, though, to finish it off and win it. Calhoun City, the Cardiac Cats. Cardiac Cats. Do it again. 34-32. Calhoun City will be in the 2A North half final. And again, you have to wait until who they will tell you who they play. Oh, yeah. It's another big game. All of these are big games. Just next wait Friday. until you hear all of it. They're crazy. All right, in 6A we go. Starkville. We've been waiting to see Starkville hitting their stride. The offense has struggled the past few weeks. Uh, that didn't happen tonight. It did not. And Horn Lake was on the receiving end of it here in the opening kickoff. Corbin Grantham. 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 Her last name that sounds familiar in the, in the town of Starkville. But that's a nice little return. But on the very next play, Malik Brown is going to find Cam Hines. Look at this run. Great catch in traffic. Makes a man miss and clear the runway for takeoff. Cam runs about 80 yards to the house for my, the my touchdown. My favorite part, Sean McDonald, the principal of Starkville High School, is running with <laughs> Cam Hines all celebrating that touchdown. Got to so keep up on that sideline. Then here on the defensive side, Jaleel Clemens, watch out, rumbles, or it should say gets a tackle to close the first quarter. And then the second quarter, See, this is one of those moments where just let the man be great. Cameron Hines, Seriously. one more time, makes a man miss. Deja vu, but look at this. He's just going to roll through about There's three. Four. There's four white jerseys there. Four people there. But if he brought back for a block in the back, ah. who knows where. We don't like that. But Starkville, it's like, it's okay. We'll just do that it's about four fire. more times. 35-7, to seven, Starkville punches their ticket to the 6th North half final. And it will be a rematch. They will host Madison Central for the second time this year at the Nest. Starkville got them a couple, mm -hmm. about a month back. For, I believe the final was 14 to 6 or 21 to 6. It was one of those like weird, like. It was a one score game. So that's going to be a tough one for the Jackets against the Jaguars, who beat a really good Warren Central team in the last seconds of that one. All right, into Class 5A we go. West Point taking on Grenada, and our good friend Justin Vollenweider coming through in the clutch again with these highlights. First quarter, one yard touchdown for Marcus Murphy, 6 0 lead. Oh, no. And then, oh, guess who's involved in this highlight? Jason Brownlee, give him the belt, the turnover belt. Agreed. Pick six. It's 12 0 West Point. And then, second quarter, the Green Wave have a 12 7 lead. If you're Grenada, how do you defend this? 
and they're trying to get Chris Calvert out on sort of the throwback pass. Instead, Marcus just decides, I don't need anyone. I'm just going to take it myself. But he needed his offensive line to block because they did a great job doing that on the 12-yard touchdown. 18-7 West Point at the half. The Greenies will play for the 5A North half final. They win big, 32-13 over Grenada. They need to work for this one, though. Grenada was a tough team. So, uh, Olive Branch, we certainly think they're going to be tougher than they were in that 50 to nothing drubbing that they had back uh, back in October. But that will be your 5A North half final from Hamblin Stadium coming up next Friday. So see if West fun. Point can finish it off that one. And uh, by the way, Hattiesburg and Laurel in the 5A South final, half final is insanely good as well. All right, to so Louisville, all black uniforms in in. It just looked beautiful. I gotta say, the old blacks might be yeah. my favorite. Yeah, uh, Deontay team. Yarbrough hit up to Quarry's hands for the first down there, and another pass from Yarbrough picking up a first. And then we would see towards the goal line. You know, you go to Kenneth Knowles when you're right here on the near the goal line. Five yard touchdown. Louisville goes up seven nothing. Deontay Yarbrough had a fantastic game. So did the Louisville defense, and the Louisville defense had to win this game late as the Power Cats had to hold on late, and they defeat Greenwood 21 to 13. So brace yourselves, kids. We have a toothpick bowl Sound the for alarm. a North Half Final. Good grief. Oh, my goodness. So, Earthquake. more than like, an, it's going to be Poplarville and East Central in the 4A South Half Final. That's The 4A State Championship game is going to be just incredible, no matter who it's going to be. So, buckle up for what is going to be a crazy next Friday uh, for Week 15 of high school football, whether it's in Macon or it's in Starkville or West Point or many other places that we're going to get to and we'll talk about when we come back. Here on the end zone, many more scores and highlights to get to and we will jump into Class 3. You saw Choctaw County hung tough with number one North Panola. How would Houston do against number two Yazoo County? It came down to the wire. Winona on the road tonight going all the way down to Scott Central and the Tigers had some late game heroics for the Rebels. And in 1A, who's the one in 1A? Well, Nana Y and Oklahoma look pretty darn good tonight. We'll show you their highlights, tell you how they did. Do their point. We welcome you back into the end zone presented by OCH Regional Medical Center in 3A. You already know about Choctaw County. Hung tough with number one North Panola. Couldn't pull through. How about Houston taking on number two Yazoo County? That Yazoo County team has Kenny Gainwell as their quarterback. He is just a terror to try to handle. In the second quarter, Houston's down 14 nothing, but they get a little lifeline here on a strip by Rich Alford and the recovery for the Hilltoppers. So a little bit of life for Houston here. So a two-minute drill coming from the Hilltoppers. And Uriah Shepard starting it off. This Yazoo County team, they're deep. Look at all these huge players and, and quick guys. And they're just they're a load to handle. First down there on that run from Uriah Shepard, keeping the two-minute drill alive. And then later in the drive. Uh, down the middle of the field, this is Dylan Smith picking up a good game. Another first down. Then the penalty would give the toppers uh, one more play before the half. And sure enough, they take advantage. And Mayday, it's Jalen yep. May for the touchdown. Houston, yeah, Houston goes down 14-6 at the half. They got it to 20-20 to in the fourth quarter. But Yazoo County scores in the last few minutes of the game. The topper season, unfortunately, comes to an end as the Panthers win 26-20. But a great effort from Houston. Nothing to be ashamed of after that. So the 3A North half final will be, won't have any area teams, but if you love high school football, you want to try to find a getaway to go to Yazoo County North Panola because that is going to be a fantastic football game coming up next Friday for the 3A North half final. To Class 2A we go. Winona making the long trip down to Scott Central to take on the Rebels. Uh, now we're going to show you highlights of this game from the first half. And the first half was nice, but it was when the second half, sort of the, the wheels fell off. Uh, of this game. Yeah. Crazy things were happening. Mayhem and you see, Yeah, you see Scott Central would get a touchdown, I believe, before the end of the half, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But it really got crazy in the last minute of the game. With 16 seconds left, Winona scored a touchdown from 50 yards out to win 22-15. to 15. More so, cardiac cats. Yeah, so Joey Tompkins and the Tigers are going to play in the 2A North half final, and they will be hosting next Friday against Calhoun City, a team they beat all the way back on October 13th, 31 to 20 at the Boneyard. And already Calhoun City barking after their win tonight. They were they are they want this game. Well you got it now. One of the cardiac cats will have to someone has, someone to, has to give or yeah. win. 
It's oh, man. Insane. It's going to be a fantastic football game wow. between the Wildcats and the Tigers coming up next Friday, which is one of, going to be one of our Carl Logan Twitter games of the week. Just wanted to let you know about that. All right, in class one, here we go. Nanawaya taking on Stringer, and Stringer was on the unfortunate end of a Chris Smith explosion. Here on a Wildcat. Hasn't everyone been on the unfortunate I end of these? I think it is, but this is like amplified because it's playoff explosions. Yeah. Here's Chris. Chris looking for white jerseys as he coasts into the end zone for about 70 yards out. That was after a string of three and out, and that was on the first play after that three and out. Tomias Glass punches it in for two, and then just when you thought the explosion was done, there no goes Chris way. Smith breaking off about three people, running all the way down the sideline, outrunning anyone, reservations for six. How did he do that? I don't know. <laughs> I just oh don't God. know. Between him and Tomias Glass making everyone's yeah, life playing against them miserable, but if you're Nana Wyatt, you're loving them. Oh, you love this. The this Warriors, is great. They went 42 to 18. Nana Wyatt's just on a collision course to get into a state championship. They season. certainly are. All right, that's 1A South. We'll get into the brackets here momentarily. 1A North, Oklahoma taking on Ray Brooks tonight. Lamar Harvey's Chieftains playing some pretty darn good football these, these days. And here, no score with about four minutes to go first quarter. Ray Brooks driving fumble. Chieftains recover, and they turn it into offense. Jacob Buchanan going to find Antonio Buchanan. They're probably related. Picking up a first down there, getting into Ray Brooks' territory. Then DeMarco Robinson getting sort of the end around handoff here. Sets up a first and goal situation for the Chieftains. And then on a third and goal, Jacob Buchanan calls his own number. He's got himself a touchdown. Oklahoma has a 7-0 lead at the half. And they go on to win 34-22 over Ray Brooks. How about the Chiefs? They are the, they're the fun story of the year, I think. They really are. So they're going to play in the 1A North half final against, surprise, surprise, it's going to be Simmons. Don't sleep on what the Chieftains are doing. They are going to give Simmons all they can handle and more. So that's going to be a fun 1A North half final from Oklahoma next Friday. At Oklahoma, that's right. And then Nanawaya will take on Resurrection Catholic, who stunned Lumberton tonight. Resurrection is a team that just always seems to make a deep run in the playoffs. They're really tough in between the tackles, and they're very physical and big. But the speed that Nanawaya has, I would imagine that they're going to that Ryan Keaton's going to try to use that to his advantage coming up yep. next Friday in the 1A South half final. It will be. Well, when we return on the end zone, we have more to get to around our area, and many of the boats in our area is in West Alabama. If you were from Lamar County tonight, you're probably feeling pretty good about what you did. We'll also have highlights over in Pickens County, and then we'll also break down some of the brackets from our area. West Point, Knoxville, Starkville, they're all winning. We'll tell you who they're playing once again and what they're doing, and we'll also talk about Starkville Academy playing for the state championship on Saturday afternoon down in Jackson. We'll preview that game. Back into the end zone, we go visit our friends in West Alabama, Aliceville, taking on Laverne here in the first quarter. Kayon McGraw is going to take a little keeper, race past everyone in the white jersey, nice. and he's going to get a touchdown. So it'll be 6 nothing Jackets here to start. But Laverne, this was kind of the story of the game. Back and forth we go. It'd be mm -hmm. a touchdown here, but then it'd be back and forth again. So then Andravius Johnson would score a touchdown in the second quarter. Back and forth, back and forth. Unfortunately, Aliceville. I think it was a one-score game all game, I believe. I think so. And, that, and you know, 34 to 30, Laverne gets the W. So Man. You can only imagine there might have been an extra point or two points somewhere in there, a field goal. But Laverne gets the W at, at, or at Aliceville, 34 to 30, tough loss. Tough way to end a great season. Yeah, for the great season for the Yellow Jackets. All right, Pickens County still rolling. They'll let defeat Spring Garden 51-9. They will be at Cherokee next Friday. Gordo season again comes to an end to Mobile Christian. Once again, that's a team that Greenway just can't get by. So they fall 24 nothing in that one. And then in Lamar County, Sullivan winning at Realtown. They will host Fife next Friday. And Fife is that's one of the powerhouses in 2A. Lamar County also winning over Ranburn 17-7. They will host Lynette next Friday. If Sullivan and Vernon happen to win, those two teams will meet in the week after that with Lamar the birth of the state title line. Oh my gosh, no one in Lamar <laughs> County can handle that. And then South Lamar also winning. They don't want to Cedar Bluff 21-14. They will host Addison next Friday. So all three of our Lamar County teams won games on the road. Have yourself and they a night will be back home next Friday as they continue their run towards a state championship. All right, when we come back, we will dive into a little bit more about this team, Starkville yep. County, playing for a state title. So lock in, hang tight, we're coming back.
All right, welcome back into the end zone. Uh, let's talk about Starkville Academy playing oh, yeah. for the state championship coming Another up Saturday at 2.30. Yeah, a great rematch against Indianola. Uh, key to the game. What do, you, what do you think Starkville Academy needs to do to win this game tomorrow or on Saturday night? Well, I mean, you can't turn away from what you've been doing, especially on the defensive side. Run well, with they, Taylor Arnold then and that's stop, all, stop Indianola. That's it. You know, they, they haven't given up a point in the playoffs. They and haven't. so, you know, we heard this week, from Chase Nicholson that the Indianola game earlier in the year, yeah. that was the turning point for Starkville Academy this year. And we talked about it earlier, Indianola is a huge football team. They're big. Big size boys for an MAIS school. So Starkville Academy, I feel like you got to get it out to your playmakers on the outside. Megan Richardson's yep. one of them. That's the guy pulling hole in that catch. So I mean, I, I think that you're going to have a Starkville Academy team that's going to want to you know, lay it on Indianola this time around. I feel like it's going to be – how many times has Indianola been that, like, powerhouse? They've been, there for, they've been there for a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah, it's like the feeling of almost time for some new blood. Yeah, man. we'll see if Starkville Academy can pull it off. They'll play at 2.30 p.m. on Saturday. I will be down there. It's expected, it's expected to be a lot of rain there, so make sure you dress accordingly if you are headed to Jackson <laughs> Academy for that Bring game. Bring your ponchos. All right, real quick, let's run through all of our playoff brackets one more time for you. We started in 6A North. Madison Central will be at Starkville. 5A North, it'll be West Point hosting Olive Branch. 4A North, Louisville. If you're not North. sitting down, sit down. Louisville and Knoxville is going to be great. 3A, no more great teams there, but Yazoo County North Panola will be a great football game. 2A North, Calhoun City will go to Winona. 1A no North, Simmons at Oklahoma. And 1A South, Resurrection at Nina Wild. Wild. Insane. It's so insane. If, if you want a little, you know, extra dessert after your Thanksgiving <laughs> Thursday, we're going to have plenty of it for High School Football Friday. So Egg Bowl Thursday, High School Football Friday, Iron Bowl next Saturday. It's going to be awesome and off the, just off the crazy. So have a great rest of your night. We'll see you next yes. Friday for the last end zone week 15. Or no, wait, wait, we have one more break. We have one more break, Luke. We'll we see you on break. It's we're not done back. yet. Never we're not done. over. Come on back. All right, so we are far from being in mid-season form. We're back here on the end zone. Just I, I just wanted to end the show so early and get to week 15 because we have so many great games yeah. next Friday. Uh, we will have two Carl Hogan Toyota games week. It will be Lewis Fort Knoxville and Calvin City Winona. It's going to be insane. It's going to be off the This chain, whole so next week is going to be crazy. Be Thursday, Egg Bowl. Friday, High School Football. Saturday, Iron Bowl next Saturday. And you got Thanksgiving in there as well. It's going to be a great next Friday. We'll see you then. The WCBI End Zone Show with Robbie Donahoe and Tom Ebel is brought to you by OCH Regional Medical Center, Carl Hogan Toyota, East Mississippi Community College, and Max South.